All right, folks, I'm going to try something a little different here. Um, this is actually going to be the second run through of the game. The first one I didn't like, I trashed it. Um, I'm filming during the day, which is not normal, so you're going to hear some background noise. I'm going to try and get it out post-filming. We'll see what happens. But, like I said, I'm going to try something new, and I'm just going to do the run through. I'm just going to do the gameplay. Um, I'm a little more comfortable just playing the game, and, you know, I tend to explain stuff as I'm going along anyway. So, I think that's what I'm going to do with the Flashpoint. We're just uh, going to just run through the game, I'll explain it on the way, leave in the comments if you like it, if you don't, I'll decide from there. Over the holidays, I'm going to decide on a few things about the way I want the channel to go. Alright, so enough of that, let's get started. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose which side of the board. Flashpoint Fire Rescue comes with a double-sided board. Okay. Here we have the family version, okay, it's a little easier. Um, you can use either side of the board for any um, level of difficulty, but mainly this side is used for the family version. It's a little easier, it restricts the flow of the fire a little more. Um, it's got four exterior doors, four entry points instead of two like the other side does. Um, the rooms are smaller, you know, so it also uh, prevents the spread of fire a little more. They're more compartmentalized. There is also eight interior doors, if I am right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, eight interior doors on this board, uh, meaning that when, it, when the door is closed, the, the fire will not spread out from the door. You know, on the other side, there's seven doors. Okay, so that confines the fire a little bit more. So it's a little bit easier. Um, today we're going to be playing the recruit level, and we're actually going to flip the board over again, and we're going to play on that side. Okay, so here we have the board we're going to be playing on. As you can see, rooms are a little bigger, you know, except for this little guy here. Uh, this one's got a little more open space on it. It's also got a hallway, which will allow fire to flow through a little bit more it's got seven interior doors instead of the eight so you know the fire can flow a little bit more there's also only two points entries two exterior doors um so while we're at it let's get right to what the board does <clears throat> as you can see it's laid out in a grid configuration okay going horizontally you have whatever the result of the red die will be Going vertically, you have the result of the black die. Okay, so when you roll the dice for the placement of the POIs, which we'll get into in a minute, or the fire arrangement, which we'll also get into in a minute, you will take the combination of the results for both die. Okay, so here we got red 4, black 2. We go to red 4 and go over to black 2, just like you would on a map, any grid. Okay. And if we move in a little closer here, this box here is considered one space. In each space, there is a symbol for where the space is on the board. Okay, so we have a little red die here with the four pips, and the black die here with the two pips. To the left of that is a little yellow arrow, okay, and it's pointing up. And what that means is if when we are replenishing the point of interest, which we'll get to, in a couple minutes um if this space had fire or smoke on it we would follow this arrow to the next space and place the point of interest there okay and this will all make sense in a minute when i explain the, what a point of interest is okay so if this space had fire or uh smoke or another point of interest or or a firefighter you would move it here Okay, arrow points this way, you can move it here to red 4, black 3. Okay, and so on and so on. Okay, until you get an empty spot. We're going to get into all what POIs and all that is in a minute. Just bear with me for a little bit. Okay, here you can see there's dashed red lines, and that represents the quadrant. Naturally, there's four on the board, and we will use them with the deck gun on the fire engine. Again, we'll get that in a minute. 
you can also move outside of the house okay and it's the same as walking inside each square represents one space here we have a parking lot for the fire engine or the ambulance okay there are four of them around the board and we'll get into the use for that in a minute here we have our save area for our victims okay when we when we rescue a victim we will put them here in the safe area here we have what I call the Deadpool I'm not sure exactly what the rules call it but if we have a uh, victim that dies in the fire we will put them there four of them we lose seven victim saved we win the game okay these little pips next to the flashpoint logo here we will be placing hotspots on okay they are going to be the only hotspots in the game that are used other than what are initially placed on the board after these are exhausted no more hotspots come from the box and go onto the board okay here we have these circles with the two blocks on them they are doorways and in a minute we're going to be putting door tokens on top of them that represent they're open or closed if an explosion comes and knocks the door off the hinges this is what will be there you do not put damage markers on there you just leave it as it is it represents an open walkway and again we'll get to that in a second okay and finally um the definition of adjacent in the rule book is up down left right unless there is a door or a wall Okay, so that's everything. That's movement, that's fire placement, that's everything. Okay? Alright, so now enough of that. Let's get to the setup. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to place door tokens, these things here, on each of the seven interior doors. The interior doors only. The exterior doors, as you can see, there's different symbols on it. They always stay open. Okay? So, we have the the little disc here the black side with the white door that is a door closed uh, symbol okay we flip it over we have the white side with the door and this little black uh, opening that means the door is open okay so the first thing we're going to do is place seven of these door closed side up on the seven interior doors Any leftover door tokens, throw them back in the box. They're not going to be used for the game. Okay, now we're going to play the recruit version of the game, which means we're going to have three initial explosions and three hazmats laid out on the board for a two-player game. Okay, with a three-player game, we will have an additional um, two hotspots. And for a four-player game, there will be an additional three hotspots. And we'll get to them in a second. For a uh, veteran or heroic game, you would also include um, three additional hotspots on top of that. So basically for a two-player game at the veteran or heroic level, we'll have the uh, initial explosions, which are um, three as a veteran and then four as a heroic uh, variant. And then you would add three hot spots on top of that without explosions, just hot spots. So that would be six for the veteran and seven for the uh, heroic player total, including the initial explosions. And then if you were playing with more than two players, you would add two and three hot spots respectively. Okay? So here we go. The first explosion, you're going to roll the. Each side it die. Okay, it's black four. First thing we're going to do is place one of these hotspot tokens, like I was telling you about. Okay, I like to place these first so I know where the explosion started. Okay, we're going to refer to the instruction manual and it'll tell us where to place the hotspot and the first explosion. So in our case, it will be red three black six okay so it goes right here red three black six we will then take a threat token okay which is these guys here 
On one side we have fire. On the other side we have smoke. Okay, we're going to take the threat token with the fire side up, and we're going to place that right next to the hot spot. Okay, now an explosion will radiate from the center to an adjacent square. Okay, and the meaning for the rules again for adjacent is up, down, left, right. Okay, so we're going to start off on the left. Now we're going to go down, and here we have a door. <clears throat> the door is closed, so it just gets blown off the hinges and taken out of the game. Okay? Now, later on, we'll get into explosions where there's going to be a door open. When that happens, the door gets blown off the hinges, it gets removed from the game, and then you place a threat token with the fire side up, in the adjacent square okay but being that the door was closed it just blows the door off the hinges same with this up here the door just gets blown off the hinges and removed from the game okay now as you can see we have them two blocks i was talking about earlier now that is just an open walkway all right it's no longer considered a closed door or a wall it's just an open walkway Okay, and the blocks represent the damage tokens, which normally go on walls. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, for the second explosion, we are going to take both the red and black die and roll them. And we will follow the result. So here we got red 4, black 5. Okay, okay so we have red 4, black 5. We take our threat marker and we place it on the square at red four black five right here okay we then take our threat marker and we place it in the spot with the hot spot all right now it's the same as the first explosion we go to the right i'm sorry to the left to the right and we put threat markers there again we have a closed door it gets blown off the hinges removed from the game and now we go up and we hit a wall, and there we will place one of these damage tokens like I was talking about earlier. Okay, place it on there. Again, adjacent is left, right, up and down, unless you run into a door or a wall. Now, if there were two damage markers on that wall, it would be considered an open walkway now. Alright, meaning that people and fire can flow through that wall with no problem. Okay, and we'll get to that a little bit later on in the movement okay now for our third and final explosion in the recruit what we are going to do is we're going to flip this eight-sided die over to the opposite side okay so flip it over and we got one another way to do that is you could add or subtract four so we got five, we would subtract four, we get one. If we had one, we would add five, uh, four, we would have five. Okay? Alright, so it was black one, and then we, we re roll the red die. And we got red three. So we put another threat token down at red three, black one. Red three black one okay place our initial threat marker there where the explosion is going to radiate from now that right here we have an exterior door nothing happens okay um, during the gameplay if an explosion happened there or at a wall with damage two damage markers on it the fire would radiate out to the outside of the building and if there was a firefighter there or a victim the firefighter would get knocked over the victim would get killed we'll get to that a little later on okay then we go up place a threat token to the left we place a threat token and then down we hit a wall we place a damage token okay easy peasy 
Next, if we were playing the heroic level, we would roll both dice. Okay, take the result. In this case, red five, black five, and we place a fourth explosion down. Okay, we're not doing that. We're just playing the uh, regular recruit version. If during the setup you roll and there's a fire token there, you would just re-roll the die or re-flip the die over and then um, go to the new result. Okay, so now we're going to take our hazmat tokens and we're going to place three of them down for the recruit level. Again, if we were playing the veteran, we would place four of them down. The heroic level, we place five of them down. But we're just going to place three of them down. We're only playing recruits. Every house has hazardous materials in it, you know, propane, uh, cleaning stuff, stuff like that. So it's pretty thematic. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to take both dice and we're just going to roll. And wherever the dice tell us to put them, that's where we're going to put them. So the first one's going to go on red one, black seven. Okay. Next, we're going to take our point of interest tokens. They're the blue tokens with the question mark on them. Some of them have victims on the other side. Some of them do not. These are called false alarms, the ones that are blank on the opposite side. Okay, so as you see, question mark one side, blank on the other, they're false alarms. Okay, and we'll get to them in a minute. We're going to take all of our point of interest tokens, all 18 of them, and we're going to flip them face side up. Okay. Okay, now out of this pool, we're going to take one false alarm and two victims. And we're going to remove them from the game, placing them back in the box. They're not going to be used in the game. Also, any hazardous uh, material tokens that we don't use also go back in the box. Almost forgot. All right, so with the rest of the point of interest, we're going to flip them back over to the question mark side facing up. Okay, I'm going to give them a little shuffle. And then we're going to move them to the side of the board, where everybody can reach them. Okay, now we're going to take three of these randomly drawn. And we're going to roll the dice and place them where the die tells us to. Okay, so we have red six, black three for our first victim, or point of interest. Potential victim, we don't know yet. Okay. So we go to uh, black six, red three, up here by the door, place the token. Then we re-roll, do it again. On the setup with anything, if there is a threat token there, or um, another point of interest, or another hazmat token there, you would re-roll and replace it in a blank spot. Now at this point, if we were playing the veteran or the heroic level, we would roll the dice again. Okay, and then place the appropriate number of hot spots in the result of the die. So here would be red six, uh, black four. We would just place the hot spot, nothing else, in red six, black four. Okay, but again, we're, we're only playing the recruit level, so we're not going to do that. Also, if you're playing, also at any level, if you're playing with three players, you would add two more hot spots by rolling and placing them, just like I did. And if you had three or more players, you would roll and place the hot spots like we just did, but you would place an additional three more down. Okay, so for three players, it would be six hot spots total, including the explosions, the, the initial explosions for the recruit level. With four players. In the recruit level, it would be seven hot spots, including the initial explosions. Okay, like I said, with the heroic and the veteran, you would add more hot spots according to which level you're playing. Okay, well, we're playing recruit, so we're going to remove the hot spot I just placed. It was just to show you. We're going to place six of them here on the pips at the side of the flashpoint logo. Now, if we were playing a heroic level, we would add six more on this side here. So 12 in total. Again, we're only playing a recruit level, so it's only six. 
Now we're going to be placing these on the boards whenever a hazmat token explodes or whenever we roll on a hot spot. And we'll get to how the hot spot works when, when we get to them. Okay. Basically what will happen is if we rolled for a spot with a hot spot on it, it won't affect the threat token, but it will um, make you roll a second advance to fire stage basically and place another explosion or another threat token and another hot spot on somewhere else on the board okay and when the hazmat tokens explode you just place a hot spot token where the hazmat token was and then resolve the explosion okay and again we'll get to that in a few minutes okay next give each player their player aid cards along with their little firefighter minis and their player cards if you choose to i don't really see the point but you know they're only colored cards place all unused minis player cards and player aid cards in the box they won't be used for the game and now each player will choose one specialist okay so for this game um let's see Jen will be the rescue specialist. I will be the CAFS firefighter. Okay, you then place your minis on one of the exterior doors. Jen's going to be yellow. She'll go here. I'm going to be green. I'm going to go up here. Okay. Take your three vehicle tokens. You're going to remove one. They're double sided. There's a firefighter on one, uh, sorry, there's a fire engine on one side, an ambulance on the other side. Put it in the box, it's not going to be used. For the other two, you want to have one with the ambulance face side up and one with the fire engine face side up. And you're going to choose, you're going to discuss among yourselves and you're going to choose where to place these. Okay, they go in the parking spots here. Okay, the ambulance goes in the blue one, firefighter goes in the yellow one any of the four around the board all right so we're just going to we'll place the fire engine here and the ambulance up here next we're going to place the threat tokens the heal tokens the action tokens and the remaining damage tokens on the side of the board where everybody can reach them okay now collectively as a group you're going to choose who goes first and then you're going to decide what that first player is going to do or should I say suggest what the first player should do. Um, in this case, it'll be Jen. And, uh, well, let's get into her role before we get started. Jen is the rescue specialist. She has four AP action points. Okay, meaning she could take four action points worth of um, actions, basically. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second when we start to move. She's the rescue specialist. She gets three movement action points for free, meaning she can move three spots for free. All right. And in addition to that, she could chop the wall for one action point. It normally costs two. Jen can do it for one because she's the specialist here. All right. Now the downfall to being the specialist is she has to pay double the cost to extinguish fire or smoke. Um, the smoke normally costs one action point to extinguish. It'll cost her two now. Fire usually costs two action points to extinguish. It'll cost her four now. And regular action points, if you don't use them all up during your turn, you can save their balance of them. Um, and she can still do that, but she cannot save the free movement action points. Okay. So that's Jen. Now, I am the CAFS Firefighter. I have only three action points, but I can extinguish three fires for free. Okay, three fires or smoke for free. And I cannot save the free action points, um, just like Jen cannot. All right, so I have three base action points and I can extinguish fire smoke for three additional action points for free, okay? But I cannot carry them over. I have to use them or lose them, okay? 